Welcome to our continuing playthrough of Churchill. And this is conference number eight, and this will be part three. And me and my new digs had to move up to the frog. And uh, the, because the sump pump kept running where the other place I was, I could get a constant hum in my um, video. So uh, hopefully you like this. Let me get it. I'm going to get adapted to the lighting here. And uh, I need to put up some acoustic panels. I think I got a pretty bad echo, but... Um, let me know if you hear any, any strange stuff or have any advice in that regard. Um, but the situation so far is we're getting ready to debate all these issues. And what is at stake is Germany. And who's going to win there? Now, we are right on the cusp. But uh, you'll see here that uh, the Russians have a good chance of breaking through. And that's going to be the determining. Japan's probably not going to go down this turn. In fact, I'm pretty, I, I know it's not. Yeah. Well, we'll see what's going. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, so anyway, decision segment. We've debated all these issues, and now it is time to implement them. Uh, starting with directed offensive, and here's where the trouble begins. There's only one directed offensive. The Soviets basically can direct the um. Uh, who do you call them? me? They can direct me. I'm playing the United States here. And so they're going to put their direct offensive here and force me to support their little endeavor into Germany. Next comes conditional issues would be the global issue and Churchill won that. But uh, according to the bot, he just uh, protects. He's already got two over on his side. Yeah, so he's protected and that's all he's going to do with it. Okay, after the, the conditional issues... Uh, production. Now we determine how many production counters everyone has. There's really only one oddball, and that is up in the Arctic. Uh, they do have, and the Soviets do have enough naval support, and therefore they are going to get an extra production. It is time for production allocation, and already, and I go first, because the Soviets won the meeting segment, and here, here's the problem. I gotta load him up with two offensive markers of my own production into here. That's irritating. That means he's gonna be able, he's in a strong position to break through. All right, I do have to get this A-bomb situation under control. I'm actually gonna go ahead and pump, pump two production into that. And with my remaining two, we're gonna go into Germany here. Now, the, now, Churchill won two Paul Mill issues, but uh, the bot directs him to only use production to charge up one, so he's just going to do the 2-2-1, two, two, which is generally considered the best one. Pop this back on here. The British will use um, the remainder, and I'm not sure, the bot says place in Western theater up to four. Now, the question is... For total, as in like what everybody has already chipped in. Uh, just for fun, let's just say it's two there with the remaining production. He will put, and let's see if we can't get a little movement on Burma. Right there. And that will be all his production. And we move on to the Soviets. Soviets, of course, are very easy. They're going to put all four production into their eastern Germany front. And they're getting quite a quite a quite a crew there. Okay. Now we have the theater leadership. I have it to command both theaters. So I get a bonus one for the European theater. We'll just put it right there. And I get one for the Pacific. And we'll go ahead and put uh, right there. But, check this out, I won both of these issues, so I'm going to retain command, and not only that, I'm going to get two for that, two for that, and the bonus for winning both of these is another two to be placed anywhere. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to put two right here, I guess nice and strong, I think we got that in hand. 
Uh, two down here, let's choose um, this one. And with the bonus two, I'll go ahead and beef this up one. So both of these are even. And finally, we'll just bump this one up one and even that out. All right, that is my production allocation for theater leadership. Theater leadership, and now finally, a bomb. We're gonna roll for it. We need a four to six, but we get plus two on the dice. Three, four, five, that is good enough. And we have the A-bomb. We can now affect uh, Japanese surrender without having to invade the mainland with our katana swords. Okay, that's good news. And that concludes the decision segment. Let's move on to the war phase. Let me clean up here a little bit. Uh, one correction from last week's play, uh, I, since I played Churchill on a global issue, I will gain another political alignment marker for a total of three here. And so first we lay out the clandestine networks, and Churchill has three of them. Let's start laying them out. Uh, the first two are very easy because you're going to place them where uh, there is a political alignment marker but not a clandestine one, and that is in two spaces here. One, Czechoslovakia and Greece. So they are secured. Uh, the final one he has will be placed randomly. So break up our dice and, oops, okay, we're gonna call that uh, one, two. One, two. And where's my palm mill two? Ah, where'd you go? Okay, one, two, Finland. And that actually works. Okay, it is the Soviets. Uh, Soviets have one, and that is going to be randomly placed. Uh, two, one. <laughs> no, wait a minute, that's one, two. One, yeah, one, two is Finland. And so he's going to use his marker to take the British one that just got placed out of there. Okay. Political maneuvering all over the place. And finally, there's me. I can put it anywhere I want without... And just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and put it in Poland. That leaves now. Oh, not that doesn't leave. What this means is now we're at the Clin uh, the political alignment phase, and um, only Churchill has any of these, and he has three of them. Let's see where he's going to place them. And well, he can't place them anywhere because anywhere he can place already has a political alignment marker. Same down here. So he's going to end up losing all three of them. Oh well. Let's clean this up. Okay, because we are attempting to enter Germany, two armies are going to be there for a total of three on us. A bit of a problem, actually. The Soviet Union automatically gets one. Probably not enough to stop them. And because we are closer to Germany, we are actually going to get the last one here for opposition of four. That is kind of a problem. Boy, not looking forward to this one. We may uh, end up losing to the Soviets here. Two armies automatically go to here, even though they will have no effect. Finally, uh, and the remaining two will go because we're trying to enter B-29 spaces. So, oh, sorry, didn't see that. Uh, B-29 spaces right here. One will get one each, and that is it. Now it is time to advance these fronts, see who won. Okay, let's bring this in close. Now, yeah, might as well start here. Four, that's gonna take one, two, three, four off. And we have a front strength of two. Oops, sorry. A bit, ow, man. Okay, I think it was like that. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Whopping total of ten here. If I can roll, well, it doesn't matter. We're not breaking through. Oh, oh wait a minute, that's gonna be an automatic. We're marching in. Die roll. Yeah. <laughs> but we have enough strength to overcome Germany. 
That is their end. Alright. But the question is, can the Soviets break through? That German will remove one there. And we have a strength of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Okay, so advancement will be automatic, and we get plus four to this die roll. We get over ten, it's a breakthrough. Four plus four would be eight. They are not going to break through. So we are going to be the first into Germany uh, when they surrender. And they're going to surrender. I'm going to double check that, but that's, uh, I think it's pretty foregone that they're going to. Let's move to the Pacific. Uh, this means nothing. Uh, we got this little action here on Burma. Uh, that would be a strength of two, uh, three, four. A four or less. Four. Huh, they actually moved. Unbelievable. They're in Burma. And finally, over here. Okinawa. Uh, that army will reduce it to one. Same here. Uh, strength of two, three, four. Both of these are going to be a four or less to win. Let's start with uh, Okinawa. Here, let's move our die over here. Seven. Nope, no good. And here. Eight. No good as well. Oh well. But, well, let's double check here. Uh, one bit of cleanup is that when Russia, you know, the Soviets moved from Prussia to East Germany, they put all these countries behind the front and they all lose ally, one allied clandestine network, like so. That, my friends, is the end of Conference 8, and we have defeated Germany. They are out of the game. No one can move fronts anymore there. And what's more, we beat the Russians to Berlin. Great. Now, tune in next time as we have the race for Japan. And I wonder how many turns it might, it might happen on the next turn. If not, certainly the next. Well, I hope so. Or we're in big trouble. <laughs> okay, but anyway, thanks for watching.